if you have some other topics, yeah, please also add them um, in case we cannot finish all, but we, we can continue next time. Uh, I'm not sure. If, can I share the screen? Uh, you should. I made you a co are you not a co host? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I think. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we want to talk about uh, issue. Young uh, kind of mentioned the last time uh, related to CSI volume stage and stage four. I think um, uh, if the volume uh, handler is the same, but uh, it um, might be represented by multiple PVs. Um, and the second item is uh, ungraceful no shutdown proposal. So we want to talk the the Yang's uh, issues first. Is that okay? And uh, typically we have like a, a feature update. So today we have a, a few people. Like um, anyone want to give some feature update first? Maybe before we go into the issue. Related to this project board. So Patrick, I think you're waiting for your PR to be reviewed, right? And then that's the only thing pending for the feature you're working on. Yeah, I guess that's that's now up to you or Michelle to give it an LGDM, and then I need to to get an API reviewer on it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. We just have a lot of meetings today. <laughs> there hasn't been any change in the in the in that PR itself. It was just that when reviewing it the last time, we came up, uh, we, we we identified a few areas that might need more tests, and that that was done in separate PRs, and that's now all merged and and ready. So I think we we can just go ahead with making it GA. Okay. Uh, it is is it about ephemeral storage or generic ephemeral volumes? Uh, then, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, who was the API reviewer? That's, that's, what, that's the problem. I still need to oh. get it into the review queue, but the precondition is that the SIG actually agrees to move ahead with it. And oh, okay. We're, we're not at that stage yet mean, because it yeah, doesn't sure. have an LGDM and so on. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering if it's better to get the same person who reviewed the beta version. That'll be easier. That's what I'm trying to say. Perhaps okay. I, I, I can I can ask Tim whether he wants to take that. But okay. still, the yeah, first thing I, is that that we need to get it into LGDM and then set the, okay. the API change or API review label. And and that. Okay, yeah, so uh, I will take a look later today after my, I just have lots of meetings, but after my meetings, I will for sure take a look today. So you have a few items in this here in progress. Yeah. So which one you think is the uh, most relevant? Uh, uh, the, what I've done, I have I have other smaller PRs pending with code cleanup to use the utility functions. Uh, and those, those have been reviewed and yeah, I'm not even sure why this one is merged, but there are others that were still open. What I did is I, I merged them, or I included them in, in that GAPR. So it's now both the GI, GA promotion and some final cleanup work. Mm. So this one is done, right? It's merged. Uh, I think so, yes. And uh, so, we need to make your screen a little bigger somehow. Oh, okay. It's tiny. Okay. So I'm ju just want to double check. Uh, uh, this one is the, the one we need to review. This. Yeah, I think all of well, the others are uh. pending. I, I can add two more PRs for smaller ones uh. that are pending. I. I, right now, my thinking is the people who should be reviewing them are still still haven't done it. So I think I'll I'll just try to get that merged through that bigger PR with Tim's help or so. That may be the faster way overall. Okay, okay. 
um, yeah. Uh, I remember one of the PR actually, you need a lot of uh, uh, approvers, like they are kind of uh, many files are affected, right? I think that's the PR. It's uh, not even like in the store team, it's like all over the place. Yeah, that, that's why mm -hmm. we have so many different owners because it's okay. using yeah. plugins, plugins for scheduler, plugins for kubelet. And uh, that's why it needs so many different approvers. Okay. Have you pinned people uh, from those uh, like scheduler and the uh, kubelet? Um, Who's owner? Have you pinned those? As, I mean, just. To, I don't, I, don't I, don't, I don't really think we need to get them reviewed. Uh, uh, but I mean, otherwise reviewed. it's not going to merge, right? Because they are the yeah, only that's, one. That's why, that's why, why we, I, I will need a, a, a root approver like Tim. But I can, I can ping him. I think I'm fairly confident that once we have that API review done, and perhaps it's even done by him, then I can get him to, to approve it and it will get it going. OK. Uh, uh, okay, so I think uh, mm, let us know if uh, some PR can be reviewed by us and uh, yeah, be, be GA one generic ephemeral volume GA that is what six storage should be reviewing. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I will take a look at that today. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so any other feature uh, want to uh, give up? Quick update or any PR waiting? Uh, so I wonder, uh, I don't know if Hamal get his uh, mic fixed because we have not. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, here I'm know. here. Yeah, OK. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually working on the, I have a PR open for uh, the FS group change policy going GA. And actually, okay. it's failing some unit tests, but uh, I'll fix those, but the PR is out. It should be pretty trivial to fix it. I'm working on the PR for recovery from resize. And I'm mostly done. One of the things that I am kind of as discussing with Jan today morning also was like, was our cap originally we proposed that we will only change external resize controller for recovery flow, will not change the entry one. And I think uh, that's what I want to do for this series, but at the same time, uh, it does mean that uh, any of the entry changes uh, in the kubelet should not affect any of the entry drivers for as far as expansion is, is is concerned. So I'm just working on that bit actually because that makes that in, that requires making sure that the code path is separate and things like that. So yeah. So I have a PR open for this one. I linked it uh, in this, this thing uh, for the FS group and I'm working on, I should have a PR for recovery today or tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so now we can uh, go on to discuss the uh, Young's uh, issue. I think uh, Young create a new one this one. So, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, I created a separate issue for one of these issues I found. Uh, so, this one is about. Yeah, if two PVs have the same volume handle, a CSI volume handle then kubelet is not able to start a pod that uses one of these PVs if the other one runs of the, on the same node. And the reason is that the PV name is on the staging path. That's the only reason. Uh, everything else would work because like kubelet is smart enough to see that they have the same. These two PVs have the same volume handle. So it is the same volume, it calls the node stage once, but unfortunately, the node stage uh, is done into a directory that contains the PV name. So only one of those spots can actually run. So I looked at uh, where this staging path is used. And there is a case when if 
Kubert cannot find the JSON file that is in the staging directory. It parses the PV name from the staging path and tries to read it from the uh, from the API server. So it knows how to call the CSI driver to call node on stage. Uh, I am not sure if this code is necessary because uh, the JSON should always be there. We, I hope we remove it only after successful nodes on stage. So I would be willing to remove uh, reading the volume from API server in uh, mount, unmount device or how it's called. And uh, do you have any opinion about that? If I remove that, then I can remove. I can rename the directory and try to make this use case working. But I would need to remove this PV. Uh, I'm sorry, retrieval. removing from where? From API, sir. So? I'm sorry. From node, uh, from unmount device call. Oh. Yeah, so I, I think I uh, just want to add a point. Uh, in tree driver does not suffer this, does not have this problem because in tree driver stage, like a global mount path, we call it, right? Uh, use the unique uh, kind of volume ID like from source volume ID. It depends on the driver. Um, they will find out that unique ID. Uh, somehow, in CSI, we use PV as the part of the global mount pass. Is there a particular reason at that time? Well, this, is, this is the reason to be able to call unmount device. I think initially we didn't have this JSON file. So I think that was the reason. So the unmount device uh, retrieved the PV from the, from the directory name. But later on, we introduced the JSON file in staging directory. So I think we can pretty rely on presence of the JSON file. OK. Uh, um, I'm thinking. Uh, no, no, that's not possible. I was thinking if somebody's dragging like the same volume mounted by, I don't know, Kubernetes 1.13 or this kind of stuff. and. Uh, just restarting Qubit without draining the node. I don't think that's possible because we require nodes to be drained during update. So yeah, this this can't happen. I think so, we can. Mm, sorry. Oh, you mentioned uh, if Qubit restart, um, what will happen if we don't drain the node? Uh, well, I was thinking. Well, there are two possibilities we discussed last time. Either we update it in the minor version update, meaning 124.0, and require a draining during uh, update from 123. Or so I could imagine some code that tries the old path before using the new path. I think it would be kind of error prone, but oh. it could work. Yeah, but if you don't uh, handle those, uh, you know, existing cases, then I, I just think there will be a lot of issues, right? Because this is not only for the uh, this particular file file share uh, thing; it's also for everything, right? All the the block volumes, everything uses yes. the same path. So it's if we don't try the old path, I think we all we just rely on everybody will drain the node. I mean. I think a very big assumption, uh, I think. Oh, well, we already rely on that uh, during CSI migration. So that was actually another thing I was actually, today I asked uh, Debian from my, my team to join us, but he was actually saying, yeah, since we are asking that, can we kind of, uh, if we can align these two changes, <laughs> he was asking, but oh, I don't know. This, but oh, this one, yeah. this is a big change. This is going to go through some stages before we are, this is a drastic change. We also have to uh, go through alpha, beta. Every, every <laughs> minor update must go through the raining. That, that's, I'm, I'm just saying that if this one, I'm just saying if we want to align those, maybe we cannot align those two. 
because that one protocol uh, first well, we, migration. We can, but st <laughs> still, every time you update Kubernetes version, the minor version, you must drain. So uh, something else could break, like I don't know something in Node and Kubelet. And, and, and uh, also, uh, in in case of CSM migration, let's say you have in tray uh, PVPVC, and after you upgrade and the CSM migration is enabled, um, will that um, break this? Uh, in case in this situation, that multiple uh, no. No, no, because you must drain during the update. You have to drain again. Basically, just searching. Basically, the, that's what I'm worried. It's like hmm. with this change, you must join before you apply this change, right? Because otherwise, oh, I'm I, I'm just uh, saying without any change, uh, just enable CSM migration. Uh, -huh. uh well, Not for any. entry, for entry, yes, but this bug is about CSI volume. It will so not get I, fixed I, by CSI migration. So I'm just saying, like uh, before in tray, right? It works, but after you enable CSI migration, will break something. I would need to check how mm -hmm. in tree Ceph FS works. I don't know. So, uh, what about going in other direction? And uh, we actually do nodes test twice for two different PVs, even if they use same volume handle. What you say, we uh, always do this twice, just keep the same same code, but always do it twice, same global path, global path. That breaks CSI. In CSI, uh, volume can be staged only once on a node. You can't stage it twice to different directories. Mm. So the fact that the volume is part is encapsulated by a PV does not matter. Hey, hey, yeah. Uh, from uh, you, CSI point of view, they uh, have the same volume. They have the same handle. For the yeah. for the fact that you try not to do the stage, or the stage is uh, required. In our case, actually, uh, for the file volume, we we don't do stage. Yeah, like I checked, uh, I checked NFS, I checked EFS. Uh, they don't do stage. So uh, is the, FS kind of required for do, CFS? No, no, no. It's not. No, no, no. It's not required. Okay. Is not can they don't do that? I mean, can they also do <laughs> all of the same? I'm just asking. Uh, I mean, if only Seth F uh, does this and run into this problem, maybe they can just change that and follow another uh, driver. Is that uh, any? Uh, no. Uh, they have to uh, it, it's it's pretty uh, impossible to change <laughs> to remove staging from an existing driver because again, you would you would need to drain the node during the driver update. Azure file but then, also has. But, then you, has, but if you change uh, this, every every driver have to go through this, right? Uh, just just uh, Azure file also has node stage. Okay. Azure file. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do stage. But they do. Do, do they have this problem? Like I guess I was trying to find out. I like, don't know. Okay. Uh, they but, should have same problem. I would they should. Think. They should. I didn't try. They should have the same problem. Uh, I mean, if we if we can keep the like, if if we call the old, you know, use the old path, and then I would think that's. Uh, that's I can try. Drastic. Otherwise, I uh, just feel it's so dramatic uh, change. Uh, then we need to drag. Mm -hmm. Then we need to drag this code basically forever. Because yeah, you can but always have. But then, but but it but it's not. I mean, every driver is. Uh, I mean. Uh, until we move everything to this, right? So it's not a problem to keep that pass, right? Why is that a problem to keep that pass? Um, well, you that's keep what, this path uh, forever. For, for, but that's for what time. backward compatibility is for, right? I was just well, thinking. <laughs> so, again, like users are required, well, cluster admins are required to drain nodes during minor update. This is nothing surprising. This is mm -hmm. existing requirement. It's documented. You must drain during update, minor update, not patch. Hmm. This is not surprising change. Yeah, uh, I kind of also feel use PV as a part of the global mount pass. Seems uh, not like correct. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I probably want to find out the, like the history. Like mm -hmm. it's a little weird if uh, we are not doing this for entry and only doing this for CSI. Uh, it's weird. Oh, as well. For for CSI, there are not so many options how to do the unique volume name. But the but the volume handle was there since the beginning. Why? But you know, it's long, uh, and I don't know. But then it now, has... do we have the same problem now? I mean, you right yeah, now, we, ha just... we have the same problem. <laughs> but, then, but then, what do we do? <laughs> you so so you're saying it, uh, I uh, wrote it in the what issue. Is the, but what is the problem? I mean, it's too too long. I mean, it's the same length. So it's not going to be so. Well, whether we system the system D starts to complain, for example. I'm sorry. So for... system D can handle only paths up to twenty. 250 characters, I believe. Oh, and so what, uh, oh you're saying warning handle because it's returned by the driver. We don't know. Yeah, it, it can be long. It can contain weird characters. Like we can so escape then, everything. Then what, then how do we fix this? I thought that your suggestion is to use warning handle. Then how do we solve this problem? Uh, yeah. I wrote it in this. Huh? Uh, we have the same problem, isn't it? <laughs> so, I wrote then, it in the issue. Like we can use, for example, hash sum. We can compute SHA. Oh, what, what did you do for the entry? But Jin, you're saying that like entry driver would just use the volume handle, but that's the same. It's, how, how is that different? The entry driver is the handle and this one. Volume handles, uh, that are volume, unique volume IDs are computed by the volume plugin and they have their own way how to do it correctly. For example, in AWS, as we use the volume ID in the cloud, which is, I don't know, 20 characters total. And we are sure it contains only the right characters we can use in paths. So every single uh, storage backend has something like that, uh, which is usually very simple, just contact, con concatenation of sm small strings. But in uh, CSI, we have this volume handle, which can be long. And actually in Ceph FS, it is long. Hmm. Uh, but it's for how about in tree you know, self driver? They they are using different ID. Uh, I would need to check what they use, but I don't know what they use. It looks like it shouldn't be the same problem. If the same, are you saying you that it's using one handle for in tree, right? Um, uh, I haven't seen any issues with entry FS, but I haven't seen it for a long time because everybody uses CSI these days. I mean, if it's the same one handle, I mean, yeah, what's the difference? I'm, I'm not getting that. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure they use different volume handle. Oh, the same entry is a different volume handle. That's not the same yeah, as. Different. Well, they use oh. a unique volume and unique volume ID. Unique volume ID is not a volume handle, it's something else. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and, uh, the state machine of actual state of the world, their yeah, unique volume ID is not the... Um, 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 uh, let me find CFFS. Yeah. So we don't have any restriction on volume handle, like how long it can be. Uh, I think we do, but we it's do have it. <laughs> We also, we, did we also expand it? And we did expand something in the CSS pack. I don't remember which one. Uh, and yeah, like uh, the volume handle itself is not enough because you must prefix it with, with driver because two different drivers can agree on the same volume handle. Right. Can use accidentally the same volume handle. So you need to add the driver name, which is another, I don't know, 64 characters. And you know, it adds up quickly. <laughs> Right. Uh, basically, oh, what we need. driver name is that okay? Mm, Would that be enough? Uh, could we be running like multiple drivers on the same, you know, on the same node? Could could you be running multiple of them? It's actually possible, right? Uh, um, um, inside of us, uh, the same driver, right? Uh, the the ID should be unique, and uh, you can have different driver. Uh, and uh, the ID could be the same. Yeah. Um, like everything, this is written in the issue already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am suggesting you, uh, computing some hash sum of the of the driver name and the volume handle, and I hope they will be unique enough that they will not conflict. Like once in a lifetime, it could happen they conflict, but. 
Yeah. Uh, we do something similar in volume attachments. We hash the volume, the PD name and node name, and we compute the hash, and we expect that they will never ever conflict. Hmm. Yeah, I think you you um, already put all the details uh, in the issue, um, and. Um, I tend to agree. Like uh, we we want to change to get rid of PV name, and uh, but uh, the the issue we um, after like uh, you make the change right, we can test in what situation it break and uh, how may we address that. We can mm -hmm. yeah. So the breaking will be like you will have to like upgrading the nodes will be existing mounts will be broken, so you'll have to drain each node. <laughs> and, uh, if you don't drain, whew, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, Something uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know yet. So that's what, what we we want to test. Maybe we have a way to to recover from that. It's not like yeah, we are saying it's totally break. It's still yeah. possible we can recover. Uh still possible recover from. Like undrained node, then it will have wrong path. How? Like we'll have to code some back, like fallback logic in the cube that you're thinking. Um, I right now I I don't know. So because yeah, I, I, where it will break, right? Then we can nail down this, <coughs> the possible solution. Right now it's just roughly it uh, probably will break somewhere, but if, after we know exactly which code, right? Then we we can talk about uh, the possible solutions. Yeah. Okay, I can try to write some patch, and we can discuss on the PR. Right, uh, like a, we just make the, the basic change, and then we can test um, against that to know what will happen. And we can restart Kubelet, for example. Yeah. So Yang, you are saying in the you, you check the code basically it's really just at this one place we're actually checking this path. Yes. Okay. We, the global the, the global the, the global path really is parsed only uh, here, I believe. Okay. I can try then. Uh, we did we check this in this other uh, um during we, reconstruction to be do something. Yeah. During reconstruction, I do remember we, we do check the global mount pass somewhere. Uh, yeah, um, because I yeah, I, because I remember I look at that that part. Uh, where is that though? Forgot about that. <laughs> I think we reconstruct from the ports from the local path. Oh, the Kubelet volume the, manager somewhere. Kubelet volume yeah, manager reconciler somewhere there. Yeah. I think yeah. we just read the JSON file from the local volume path. Right, for CSI, it's probably uh, different. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so maybe maybe this is something that, OK, OK. I think I, you know, there's some mention of this in my, this other cap, the non, non graceful machine cap, clean up the global mount directory in the cube, cubely volume manager. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think uh, Young could uh, go ahead with some changes to try out. <laughs> okay, and I'm not sure, do we have a time to discuss the other issue? I have some idea, and but it's not that well uh, described, I would say. Uh, for, so, for uh, no, maybe we we can skip it and talk about the graceful should no shutdown on ungraceful. So, oh, you mentioned this something else. You 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 have some idea. Well, yeah, I have the other issue. Oh, what do you uh, from uh, when two PVs use different volume handles, but in the mount table. They look the same. They have the same mount source. Then, uh, Kubelet 
outside of CSI. It checks when it wants to unmount the device. It checks uh, if it is mount mounted somewhere else. And in this case, it will find the other volume uh, mounted. And it will not unmount the volume and yeah. Uh, and it will always complain and error and you can't basically unmount the volume ever. Is this issue? Is the problem? Um, that's the that was the issue you yeah. talked about on um, Monday, I believe. Or is it same? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This exactly. one exactly. It's, it's a very different. similar issue, but yeah, uh, like the will be from the same issue, from the same implementation, caused those two issues, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> right? Because but, it is different. Because it is a different <laughs> issue. Like, <laughs> but it's the because the, is, but it's because volume. they have to because they have two hand uh, two volume handles pointing to the same volume. Yeah. Now same now handle. we have. Uh, two PVs with two different volume handles. That's the difference. Uh, but the rest of the setup is the same. So in the end, uh, in the end, in this case, node unstaged is not called because before Qubit calls node unstaged, it checks if the volume is mounted somewhere else and it finds the other volume mounted because it has the same uh, source in mount table. Mm. That's the problem here. Mm. We have two different volumes, totally different volumes, but they have the same source in mount table. So Kuiper does this check. So I was thinking like, what if we remove this check completely? Mm. Uh, because Kuiper already checks that all the ports that use the volume are gone and their volumes are, the local volumes are unmounted. We, we checked it somewhere else. So why is this check actually good for? So basically, you just allow Kubernetes to call it uh, as many times as it needs. Uh, if uh, so, in this case, it will be called twice, basically. Do you have yeah, the, 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 no. do you have that in, uh, code? It is here? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't. That's about I. But I said it. I don't have it well described. It's just in my brain. So in this uh -oh. case, what's happening is that. The two PVs they use same volume, and when both the pulses are using that are deleted, the node unstaged never gets called. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it yeah. doesn't need to be the same volume. That's the problem. Like if NFS use node stage, mm -hmm. it would hit this issue too, because the sources look the same. Just correct. So you mentioned that you want to remove some check on months, right? So I just yeah. want to. Like where that is, um, I... and I always like feel, if possible, <laughs> we, we should remove those mount check. You see, we we have hit a lot of um, issues. Yeah, the, exactly. So if possible, uh, to get rid of those logic. It was somewhere in uh, operation generator. So the check is to check if the mount points is already gone or something, or is it? Yes, it. Well, it checks that the staging uh, mount is the only mount on the system of the volume on the system. Oh, it okay. So it only calls if it's a it. If it only calls if it's a uh, not the only calls if it is the only only one. Yeah, yeah, it called if it's two, then it does not call on stage. Okay. Yes. But it checked before. Before that, it checked already that all the ports are gone and their volumes are unmounted. It, this is yeah. it was checked. I think, I think this why is, there are yeah. why there are two actually left at that point? Because one was uh, why was two 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 entries left in proc like no, two here? handles pointing to the same Volumes okay. stage twice basically. So then These they are have two different power. volumes from from yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Point okay, of view. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, here, here it is. Uh, I found the code. I can link uh, it into the. Yeah. Oh, I can link it somewhere uh, into the document in the meeting notes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm not at the right computer right now. So. You can just post it on the chat uh, here uh, in the chat. 
Well, I'm connected through my phone, and <laughs> this is complicated. But I can uh, join. Yeah, I can join. Maybe I can join also on my computer without the so, audio. Yeah, typically we do the check. I'm just thinking the reason we do the it's kind of like a mount reference check. Um, is it because we want to avoid some risk condition? We don't trust um, the actual state, or we want to kind of verify physically, like there is no no longer some months. Um, I'll share that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking uh, if we un unstage the volume then we also remove it from the node status and we like treat it as ready to ready for detach but if it is mounted somewhere else i don't know maybe it's not uh, that ready to detach <laughs> <laughs> so i in the chat i pasted link to the code that checks the mount references this is outside of csi this is the same for all volume plugins if nfs did mount staging or mount device uh, it would hit the same issue i believe and the same for Ceph and Is for oh, most of the entry ones so i think this is the uh, get device mount reference yes so if it has mount reference right so mm -hmm. you're thinking this to being used by some part um by anything on the system it's not about pods, it's about really any any mount somewhere else, anywhere else. It could be, I don't know, system admin uh -huh. mounting the volume for some, I don't know. So in, in that case, if we uh, unmount, uh, if there's still some mount reference, will it fail? Uh, no, 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 it will unmount this, uh, the, the stage mount. And if it's mounted somewhere else, it will be still mounted somewhere else. That's okay. So will there be any problems? Because it's like, if we remove this check, could we do this on stage too early? I guess that's the, could there be any I, potential problem there? Um, well, uh, I guess that's why this uh, check is there, right? Uh, supposedly you are supposed to call stage only once. So now yeah. we actually could call that multiple times. Could that be? causing problems for some other drivers that actually only want to want this one to be called. Uh, I guess that's something you just need to think. I mean, I don't know. I'm, so um, I personally don't see too many problems, but I would appreciate any feedback before we remove this check. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, the only issue I see is then if the note on stage succeeds, which probably succeeds, they declare the volume to be already to detach. Oh, but, the, so but we know that, that the volume problem, is not right? Oh, I, I, okay. So how does this one work now? It has to do that twice, but then, uh, I mean, like for like for this specific FS driver, they have to call this oh. stage twice before they detach. Is that right? Well, they, oh. they don't implement detach, so that's oh. fine. <laughs> yeah, but then for other driver could be, I was just thinking, <laughs> that'd be a problem. Uh, so uh, that's what I don't know. Yeah, like, maybe, uh, we need to maybe we need to ask and just, uh, you know, this behavior, could this be a problem for other drivers if we call on stage too early? I mean, what problem uh, would that be, I guess? I mean, for the drivers that find out, I don't know. Um, for, for the drivers that they do uh, attach, detach, they, I think like all of them use block devices and the block device is always unique for each volume. Uh, yeah, so I'm normally sure it, should just, have... it should be just one. That, uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering why this, this check is here. I don't know if there's other reason why this check. Uh, uh, I think I that know. there could be, like, if the pod, if the tubelet crashed and it was restarted, then the the counters that we maintain, like, okay, we, before we uh, unmount device, I think we count reference, like, if this is the only reference left. So I suspect that, uh, like, yeah, if we just relied on the state stored in kubelet, then we could have like wrong data or something. So that's why we are referring to to uh, table to verify. Okay, but uh, if it is not in the kubelet states of the world, then I mean, nobody's there, but going. The count is wrong. 
like the the, the this reference count we maintain right um mm. but uh, like uh, young i but, think you mean it's that's not if it's not in actual state we we never call this like uh call this uh, operation at all so that means uh, we should have uh, information about the volume in actual state um I'm not sure that we have a counter. I think we have a list of uh, ports that depend on that yeah. volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's like we use that as a counter, like when it is. Yeah, yeah but uh, if the list is wrong, then nobody's going ever to unstage the volume because there is something missing in the list and nobody's going to unmount that thing. But what if it races with the uh, uh, like reconstruction and this code races? That's what I think. Uh, reconstruction only happened during the uh, Kubernetes right. once. Yeah, it did not periodically run. Right. Uh, but uh, it, the reconciliation runs. Like it's possible that some code is reconciling while while the reconstruction. I, I, I feel like uh, it's here we do the check it's may help like uh, but uh, if we think about the recent data it does not have any guarantee because after you check it still might some new mount comes in so there's no 100 like uh, percent guarantee about the race mm -hmm. even we have the check um the the check um I don't know i'm yeah. trying to find history but i, I don't yeah know i mean that, I, I suspect that's why the check was introduced like you know like having this not having a very robust mm -hmm. rec reconstruction mechanism or something but yeah like your point is valid Jing. Even if having the okay. is not, not... but uh, then we have a csi driver where this check doesn't work yeah i don't know i think we need to think like how to hmm. solve this. Yeah, I understand the issue, I understand the recall, uh, but I don't know. So let, let, let me try to dig if I can find some history about this uh, <clears throat> mount. Found some, I found uh -huh. a PR that adds it, adds the check. Uh -huh. Which Four PR? Years ago, uh, I just sent it to the chat. It's four okay. years ago, and that's the huge reconstruction I work that you did. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this that's is the old history. It's my PR. <laughs> oh, your yeah. PR? Is it new? Oh. No, no. no, it's four year old. Oh, four year old. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows what, nobody remembers. Uh, maybe I'll take a look. <laughs> at least you have some description <laughs> and see how, you know, what, how this is supposed to work. Okay, good. At least I will read the description <laughs> part because <laughs> I don't know the history. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can take a look because it's my PR and. Um, Mm, let, let me see if I can remember anything. It has a, it has a very helpful comment actually. So yeah, so, I think that actually is very very good because if you just read the code, you don't see that. It, it has a it's comment. A this is, this is a workaround for uh, <laughs> this is a workaround in GCI cluster. If GCI cluster is used, mounted GCI mounter used for mounting yeah. anyway. There's yeah, a you found some comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a two. And this is the first here. PR. Is there a second PR? Is that, is that what that means? This is the first part of the redesign of the volume reconstruction work. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you open the second link that I posted in chat, it has the comment. Okay. Uh, the second link, this? Sorry. No, the second, the one that I posted before the arms, I didn't post anything. The last link. Yeah, the, that one has a big comment. Yeah, long, <laughs> a long description, long PR description. Um, no, it should take you yeah. to this the... PR is the first part of the redesign, right? That one? No, 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 no. Hmm? no. I don't know. GitHub sibling is failing. Oh, 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 oh. You, yeah, oh, you also posted one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. This is different. Yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, work around for the unmount. You should cost. She said, Oh, okay. Oh, no. The, the, this work around is mean. Uh, doesn't mean we don't want this mount reference. It's just how this mount reference implemented, I think. So because uh, at the beginning, the, the maybe some implementation of mount reference uh, 
we will have issue because uh, there are some months we should not count, but we can't. Uh, so it's just the, the implementation of how month reference is implemented. That's uh, to do, I think. <laughs> That's uh, but uh, it, it's not a reason why we want to <laughs> check the month reference. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I will check. Yeah, I will check and uh, see if I can remember. Oh, it looks reason. like this is this is removed, isn't it? Uh, this is uh, no, it's it's already there. I think oh. my design my design does not add that logic. We, we, oh, we just, you basically just moved it to some other place. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me yeah, let me take details <laughs> <about> history. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, next time uh, I would see whether I can find something about this. Yeah. Uh, do we still want to go, move on? Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's. I think it's all from me. I took already too much time. Uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe you can. Uh, maybe Jin, you can take a look and uh, you know. Yeah, you yeah, can tell us what's the history behind this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I will do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, wait, do we want to continue? We can just quickly talk about this. Yeah, we, we cannot, and obviously, we cannot finish, then we can uh, continue in the next meeting. But I just want to uh, talk about this a little bit. Uh, can I share the screen? Yeah, yeah, please. Um, I need to stop. Okay, so I need to find the. I did the, Okay, this is the PR. Uh, yeah, so I just want to go. I have not updated the PR yet. This is still the same one. Uh, so I think what I want to do is to remove the part where we're saying we're going to depend on the graceful no shutdown tab because we're not. Right, so now, now uh, initially uh, we said we, we narrow down the scope, only handle the graceful no shutdown, but now it's actually the opposite. We, uh, we only handle the case that is not handled by the graceful no shutdown, basically. Uh, so I just want to see uh, if this general idea and see, you know, uh, what you guys think and, uh, you know, what, what else we should try for this. So basically this, uh, we introduced this uh, uh, CSI spec field called the safety touch. Mainly it's just for CSI driver to say if they want to opt in uh, for this feature, basically. Meaning, you know, CSI driver know, knows this feature and they, they think this can solve their problems. So this, uh, we have this flag here. And then uh, the in the existing logic, what happens is uh, if, uh, let's say if we have a, uh, I think so. Now we should actually also consider like node partition case, node partition, or or graceful, or if it's like a node shutdown, but not detected by kubelet somehow, right? Not detected by their graceful node shutdown logic, then it will all force into this. Because what happens is like after five minutes, uh, the uh, there is the there is the tamed manager will try to delete the pods, um, and then. And then, but then the pod will be stuck in the terminating state. It's going to, you know, I think this is reproducible if uh, if it's not, yeah. Questions? Do you have questions? The, uh, yeah, the idea is uh, mainly like forced to detach. How about the pod? So the pod will continue stuck in terminating? No, we will delete pod. We will delete pod. So the so this the, this is the existing logic, right? So the proposed change yeah. is that is we will delete the pod. So that's the, the proposal logic. This is uh -huh. in the, the, there is a pod garbage controller, this controller, uh, GC pod yeah. GC controller. So in here, we are adding some logic here, uh, okay. just to, to check, to, to check if, uh, you know, uh, but this is, of course, some of this will change because I was initially trying to check if the, if this is a graceful no shadow actually. <laughs> so right now, basically it's just uh, uh, over here, if this is this is a terminating, we basically waited for already. This is like wait already waited for um, five minutes, right? Waited for five minutes. Comes to here, then we will start to 
we will check this. We'll check the safety touch flag in the CSAT driver. So that one we introduced. If that is set, we know that driver want to opt into this feature, then we uh, will try to delete the pod. But we also, you know, here we are trying to add some uh, quarantine taint, right? So before we delete the pod, we add those taint. Uh, just to, this is trying to make sure that when the pod comes up again, uh, well, no, on the node, on the node. Uh, when the node comes up, up again, we don't want to, uh, we want to clean up before we schedule the pod to, to them. So, the, so basically we add taint on the node first, and then we try to delete those pods that are kind of stuck, forcefully delete them. And then, um, yeah, so that's what it says here. Right? After applying the taint on those node, forcefully delete the pods that are stuck. And then, uh, and then there was also some change that we need to do in the uh, attach, detach, um, reconciler. So uh, there was there was a check there. Basically, we need to we need to kind of skip this. And there was a particular check there. We have to skip that. So basically, if uh, this is safe detach, then we we will skip the skip this uh, check so that it will not block us from moving forward to uh, allow the volume attachment to be deleted. So, so this will actually, then this will go ahead and delete the volume attachments. And then, um, and then this way, basically the volume unpublish, uh, controller unpublish volume will happen before node unpublish or node on stage. This, you know, when we allow this one to happen. So this is, this is something that just, you know, we allow this one to uh, go kind of out of sequence because of this, uh, you know, abnormal situation and and then of course the 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 attacher external attacher will uh, detect that and then it calls controller on public volume basically uh, and then uh, in the and then this one basically just saying the well the CSA driver right? CSA driver is it's opt-in and then they will check whether it's uh, safe to detach or not so, uh, you know, you see a drive does not want to detach and then it does not detach and then it will be, it basically be retried, basically. Uh, if but, it, uh, mm -hmm. Right, overall, like, I think it's uh, probably can handle the shutdown case. Uh, it just, um, if we think about the uh, network partition, then it's very hard um, Mm, because uh, for yeah. network partition, the workload is still running, and uh, at the same time you detach the volume, it will cause some data corruption. So this is a, this is why I think uh, here we're saying it's the the CSA driver will have to check. So that's why I think this solution initially I think uh, was is written more for kind of cloud provider. Like you can actually check your compute node, uh, go find out whether it's safe to detach or not. Uh, yeah, so I think it's kind of like a more narrow cases because, uh, yes, just as you said, the partition case, uh, if you if you see the driver does not know, then you just have to, you know, don't don't detach, right? So basically, this will be first of all, this will be like opt in, opt in option, uh -huh. because otherwise we'll have to really go. Uh, you know, there was some. I think there was actually, um, I think Hua Ming have some something. In his own repo, that, that, that's kind of old. I think a few, maybe a few years back, he proposed that it's a fencing, right? That you actually have to get, you actually have to reboot a node, but then that's also very complicated because uh, for every cloud provider or even for any driver, it, it's a different shutdown command. Uh, so it's very complicated also. It's like an external um, controller to do that. I, I, you know, I just feel Kind of uncomfortable to have that incorporated in, in this approach. I, mean, I was just wondering if we should try this one first. Uh, I don't know if you have you look at the, the the fencing thing that he proposed. Basically, you so basically for every so the so basically Adam will have to go configure that. Uh, if it's uh, you know for different for different uh, kind of environment, you have to use a different command to shut down. Basically, mm. yeah. Uh, can we add so just one thing uh, to make it safe uh, so we can make sure the machine we can get the machine state and uh, um, if we can say the machine we know is shut down 
if yeah, network partition that's, that's a driver right driver side because it's we're not really we can't really uh like here we're not really we can't really check that uh yeah in the beginning in the very beginning like oh, uh, oh. Controller, controller side like the cube controller or whatever controller they can check the machine state uh as I long as they don't can verify I don't think they can check. What do you mean check the machine state? Check the node state, but node state already node is node is not ready, right? Mm. It's not right. Node yeah. is not ready. But so what? Yeah. What you want to check? But what are you are asking for? I think it's more like the call provider may may be able to go check those yeah. kind of yeah. node. Right. But then, right. but then I think then I don't think it's maybe that's that would be like cloud cloud provider logic. Uh, I don't think we can check it. Can we check it? I don't know we're checking here. This is the this is the part of the GC controller. So you are thinking who is, another. Who hmm? is adding yes. this uh, node shutdown reason in the pod? I'm sorry. Yes. Say that again. Who, who is adding this reason in the pod status to be node oh, oh, shutdown? Oh, sorry, sorry for this, this for the sorry for the confusion. This was uh, at that time I was uh, trying to incorporate the graceful node shutdown logic into here. That's why. So this will not be, no longer be there. This was at that time we can uh, from the graceful no shutdown we can know the reason, but but as we discovered graceful no shutdown can handle it if you know if it actually detect it's the graceful no shutdown, so we can't we cannot rely on that one. Remember we add a logic uh, in I think node lifecycle controller somewhere to check the machine and then taint the shutdown state. We do have. Some uh... Yeah, so I think we are actually at the top of the hour. Maybe I can pin, uh, maybe Jin, I'll pin you offline on that, that thing. We, we'll, can, we, can we continue this one on Monday? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the other I'm thing was, uh, uh? Yeah, there's, a, there's two things. One is the taint was there, and the second thing was that the, the case, the race, race case when the node is shut down, mm -hmm. but then, and, and the cloud provider temporarily, yes, reports the node is shut down, but then it gets yeah. booted back up. And what if that races with whatever we are doing? Like, right, right. So that's why we we need to add the you know the we need to add the we need to add the quarantine taint first before we actually even shut down, right? So that's a. But I, we I think yeah I actually have to jump on another meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So can we can we talk about this again on Monday? Yeah. Uh, sure. Then I will send an email saying we still keep the Monday meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think maybe just to, I will say I will suggest maybe just like on Friday afternoon check if there are anything on the agenda. If there's nothing on the agenda, then we just cancel that meeting. How about that in this way? Uh, you know, yeah. If we have, you know, if we actually have this the time to talk about these issues, I think this is actually helpful. Uh, sure. So <laughs> anyway, I will send an email to remind, uh, like make it clear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.